Uh, my name is Britton Covey. I play football for the University of Utah, but I grew up in Provo, Utah, right next to BYU campus. I had older brothers who loved sports, so I grew to love sports, especially football, but I was always the smallest one. 5'8", 150 pounds in high school. Not many go to play college sports after that, but I was lucky enough to do that. For everyone who's played college sports, this name, image, and likeness deal has been a, a pain point for all of us because we've all wanted to be able to have endorsements, promote things, and I was reached out to in the first week by 15 to 20 companies saying, hey, we'd love to partner with you, endorse you. And it was really cool, but then I just remember thinking, I feel like this can be so much more. I feel like I want to use my name, image, and likeness for something a lot bigger than that. So my name is Rebecca Covey, and I am a mother of eight children, and my oldest daughter is Rachel Covey, and Rachel is the girl that this whole foundation is named after. She is fun and energetic, and she loved animals. Very, very creative, right-brained, loved art. Growing up, we did everything together. We had the same interests, and we have similar personalities, so we just got along really well. So when I was 14, I bought my first horse, named him Tarzan. And then Rachel, she had just graduated high school, and she said, wait a minute, I love horses. I'm gonna get one too, and then we can ride together. So then she got a horse, and then we were inseparable from then on out. And Rachel was, you know how she was, yeah. very adventurous and like, this horse is a daredevil. Yeah. yeah. So this was her original horse. I think there are moments in people's lives where they receive news of something and they will never forget where they were at the time. And my dad received a phone call and I could tell by the tone of his voice within two seconds that something was wrong. And instantly it was like something hit me that Something serious has just happened. It was September 6, 2012. She always struggled with depression. Um, but at that time, like, there was not a lot of awareness about it. I feel like I had always been taught to be a kind person. My parents made a big emphasis on teaching their kids to be kind and to reach out to people. But I never really understood why that was so important until this moment. But then a few years later, my other cousin on my other side of the family, Jenna, she also committed suicide. I feel like it's a, it's a silent battle that the vast majority of people have at yes. some point in their lives. Because you never know what someone is going through. Right. Like Jenna. Exactly. Yeah. One of the most impactful moments of my life was when my aunt, uh, Jenna's mom, stood up at her funeral and looked out and said that Jenna felt like nobody cared about her. She felt like if she left that nobody would notice. So if you care about Jenna and if you love Jenna, I want you to stand up. And there wasn't a single person left on their seat. Everybody in the whole congregation, thousands of people were standing up. And she said, if you ever question your own self-worth, don't you ever for a second think that nobody cares or, or that nobody notices? And I feel like everybody has moments like that in their life. And there is darkness and there is despair, but never forget that, that you are important. Someone came to us after she passed away and they said, you have like two choices right now. You can let this destroy you and let it tear up your family, or you can let it strengthen you and you can become stronger because of it and build muscle because of it. Those moments really impacted me, and from then on, I tried to be an advocate for mental health and awareness of things like this. And if there's any cause that I want to promote, it's that cause. Always treat someone like they're going through something extremely difficult, because the vast majority of the time, you'll be right. We had one of her friends come to us two days after, and she just said, do you know that Rachel changed my life? She took me horseback riding every week. 
and it just did something to me. It just gave me confidence. It got me out of my little bubble. And they'd been going on trail rides for the last couple of months, and we didn't even know this. So then this girl comes to us and said, she literally changed my life. I've turned my life around, and I'm doing so well now because of Rachel. So we literally, two days after she passed away, we came up with the idea. We said, let's start a foundation. Let's start something. We can just start with girls in the neighborhood that are struggling. And so that's what we did. Helping girls who are also struggling with anxiety, depression, trauma, abuse, help them see the light, help them find hope, confidence, resilience through learning how to ride a horse. And then we also incorporate the seven habits from my grandpa's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, into the lessons. They're naturally integrated into the lessons. And we have a girls program and a women's program. The girls program is 14 weeks, um, and most of it is with the horses. I call them 1,100 to 1,600 pound object lessons. And it's beautiful to watch how uh, we aren't clinical, but the seven habits meet the girls where they are. So whether they're struggling with body image or they're struggling with depression, anxiety, if abuse of some kind, and they're able to really pivot and be in a, in a better state of mind. When you approach a horse, they know what your heart rate is. When you're on a horse, they know where you're looking. They mirror back your character, so you naturally calm down and you naturally become a better version of yourself. And the more you work with horses, the more that stays with you. And for example, we'll be teaching our girls kind of about confidence and they'll be doing groundwork with one of the horses and the horses will be ignoring the girl. And they'll say, you know, why, why do you think this animal is not taking you serious? And we'll talk about their posture and what they're thinking about and how they're feeling. And it's beautiful to watch how they learn about confidence by talking about how they're interacting with this horse. They come away with this feeling of hope, hope in their heart that they can do hard things and that they can be resilient and that they can be confident and that they can do anything in life. We're just building them up. We're just building girls and just helping because if you can help one girl or save one girl, you save generations. What do you think Rachel would say if she saw all of this? Oh my gosh. <laughs> She'd be like, are you serious? Are you yeah. serious? No, I think Rachel wouldn't have it any other way. We have so many girls, hundreds of girls, who have said, I would not be here today if it wasn't for Bridal Up Hope. What we are trying to do is inspire that group of people who are able to use their name, image, and likeness now to use it for something more than just opportunities to make money. Everybody's experienced things in their life that have been difficult or that they've grown from and they want to give back in those areas and they want to help educate people in those areas. So that's why this came to mind. If I have a platform, then I want to use it to promote something that I care about and raise awareness for a charity that means a lot to me and that is personal.